before the sun appears, before the world has even stirred, let's get out of here. Going in a bit too hard on that one. Out of control this morning. <laughs>
You're like the main troublemaker. No, no. What was that? Sorry, Maxine. She's been so vocal this morning, oh, Shadow. Goodness. I thought it was Abra. <laughs> One more and you're in trouble. No more. <laughs> it's like they haven't had their coffee yet or something. I yeah. don't know. Wake up on the wrong side of bed. Was um, Roscoe ever vicious? Like, did he... he was he ever, Really? Because he's so chilled out. Like, he is, yeah. I know. Oh, buddy. Don't like that bit. <laughs> Some of them don't like the tails. Yeah, right. Pretty sensitive. Yeah. There's no, um, even if I go softly, they just yeah. let me on the bone. Not too much hair though. <laughs> Before that, you're definitely not ginger. <laughs> Shadow, is this your most favourite thing to do ever? <laughs> do you love bath time? Maxine said that you, you had one last week and then maybe the last time as well. Huh? Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> You've had two baths in the last two weeks. <laughs> no more baths for you, Bubby. No more baths for you. <laughs> Rosie's turn. Come on, Rosie. Move, Shadow. Shadow, Shadow, come on, darling. Come on. 
Mm -hmm. Hello, Rosie. With your big smile. Hello, Lily. Are you hiding from Dylan? <laughs> Why is she hiding from Dylan? I don't know. She has this thing where every time Dylan, um, I, I, I suspect it's that he is often coming to get her to. No, um, or Luke, and um, so if Dylan's on food prep, then he has to come and get her and and like leash her to come and eat her. Food. And I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what the go is with um. Yeah, it's. I don't think there's any like you can read into it or explain it or. It's another case of it's just her. Yeah. <laughs> Hello Matilda. Hello everybody. Hello Lily. Exactly. Yeah. Not because he knows what the, you know, I've got to drop and be calm. It's, you know, oh, I really enjoy Lily's company now. <laughs> dominant thing the mounting like if people say it's de everyone debates it but here at the farm it's a dominant thing <laughs> she's just trying to dominate rover so it's not like <laughs> you're all so cheeky this morning I'm not going anywhere. Like, yeah, he, my option never comes again. I know. Don't, I, Dylan's not looking for you. Maybe when she's due, we'll just get Dylan to suck. <laughs> and then she won't have an amount of Walk in this direction then. <laughs> Isn't it's it? Very different. Like Matilda is the odd one out, isn't she? Like with that really short, yeah, but she's uh, thinner coat. She's got like a big ridge on the back. <laughs> like it's big hairy ass ridge. Like a big woolly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, diesel is is gonna be like when the DNA tests come back. Do you have any thoughts? Um, Did Maxine just asked if we got the results, <laughs> and I said, "Oh, it's any day." <laughs> um, I think you'd have to go back through the video. I can't remember what I said when I was. Oh, I can't uh, remember either. I think I said border Connie or Kelpie. Yep. He's 
got a really thick coat, so maybe German Shepherd or yeah. if he has got a proper um, undercoat. Mm. Maybe German Shepherd. Yep. Or even maybe something. I know. I'm going to go. No, I think that's weird. a really good guess. <laughs> What's, what would be your wild card? Husky. Just husky. Yeah, okay. I think they're all very good. Um, what do you think? Guesses. Well, we, we very strongly think because of his behaviour for the collie. Yeah. Um, but I struggle <laughs> on what else. Good yeah, with that. It's really hard, hey. Yeah. I've seen um, a Border Collie Cross Golden Retriever oh, yeah. that looks exactly the same but is just thick, a little bit thicker set. That's actually so, pretty. but he's very skinny. He's so, skinny. so, it feels like the big, the more chunky Golden Retriever would maybe wouldn't fit. Um, so that's why skinny ass. Because they, they can be a bird dog, you know, um, yeah. or bird chaser, sorry. Uh, Gun yeah, which he does have that as well as the strong herding instinct. Um, but we did have a dog that kind of looked like him in shape, definitely not coat, and um, that was Mally the Brittany. Ah, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, buddy. Yes. So behaviour-wise, like. That's actually a really good guess. Yeah, he does all the things like the bird chasing and the OCD and all that kind of stuff. Um, I know, I love but that I don't know. Thing. You do? Oh well, because oh, they're wow. French. Yeah, so, wow. Oh, wow, Maxine. So, yeah. How interesting. I don't. I, honestly, I only know because of um, Mally, the dog that came to daycare. Oh, goodness. Miss Violets, come on, out, stop chewing. They're just, they're full on, um, Britney's. They are. So you reckon that could, that's that could a, be a possibility? Reckon, and they're so skinny, I reckon that's a good guess. Yeah. I can't wait to find out. It, I do find it interesting. <laughs> We're pro we'll probably be so far off, it'll say something <laughs> that they're like, oh, okay. I think there's a canine or an animal photographer in Sydney, a really well known one. Yeah. She did one on her rescue dog. Yep. And it seemed, I think, they could just look like a Kelpie cross, like, or Labrador cross. Yeah. Kelpie or something like that. Yeah. And I think they were the main ones. But there was like Maltese Terriers. Yeah? <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's funny, isn't it? When it's those. Um, very random, like yeah. five percent this or yeah. goodness. I'm so sorry, Maxine. Everyone's a bit. As I, said, I don't mind. But... Miss Violet. She's... I know. I <laughs> no, no more, no more. I'm wagging my finger at you. Banjo, cut it out. Oh my goodness! Please don't destroy. We just can't have anything nice, Maxine. No. Of course not. I feel like a between you and your brother. Um, not chocolate. Manjo thinks it's him as well. Yep. Yeah, it often, it often is you, isn't it, buddy? You're a bit cheeky. Tries to be a really good boy, though, don't you? Yeah, go, good. good boy. Mum's just the treat dispenser. Oh, Gus. What a good girl you are, Maggie. No, Gussie. It's Barney. Did you get one, Miss Violet?
Cut in. Sorry. If I do a light dry, yes. we'll do all the ones that are due. So it's be six in total. Oh, okay. yeah. Whatever, whatever. Um, honestly, that's yeah. great. Whatever you think, Maxine. That's but I don't think that they need a proper dry. I'm sorry I didn't say it for banjo. Oh, no, that's okay. Just for everyone at home, it's going to be really, really, really hot today. It's going to be like 38 degrees Celsius. So, I don't need a full dry. So Maxine just asked if we can teach her how to sign to Maggie because Maxine loves Maggie. <laughs> but the ones that she loves, look, she's looking at you like, I feel like you're going to talk to me. The ones she loves the most is this one, which gets her excited, like both hands. Yeah. <laughs> and, and this one, because that means good girl. I do that one. Yeah. That one. <laughs> yeah. But the more like, um, uh, body movement that you like the more you get into it yeah. she gets so excited <laughs> she's a good girl <laughs> um what are we gonna do is oh yes you are such a good girl <gasps> good girl what a good girl you are here you go <laughs> that was just for Maggie. I was saying to my partner that I think our dog Toby and Maggie would love it because he's oh. the same. He's like really like, oh my god, this is so great. <laughs> I love you. Yes. And he's like really like yep. over the top with other dogs, yep. which I think is what makes other dogs cranky. Miss Violet and her are best friends. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Because Miss Violet is kind of the same, similar personality, you know? Yeah. My old, one of my old horse bosses in Sydney, they have, um, what? No one's coming? It's all right, Rosie, you're going. <laughs> um, they have two Malinois, and wow. um, another type of Belgian Shepherd called, um, oh, I'm going to get it wrong, which one is it that they've got? Um, Lake Noir, that's it. A what? Lake Noir. Yeah, right. So it's like a hairy, so it's like a yeah. long haired, wiry version. It's not a, Malinois. it's not a Lakeland Terrier cross Malinois, <laughs> is it? <laughs> Lake Noir. Lake Noir. <laughs> Um, so they kind of actually look like a Malinois crossed Irish wolfhound. Wow. That's the kind of weird coat that's going on. Yeah. Anyway, but she, w she wasn't there when I used to go there with my dogs. Yes. And so it was just the two Malinois who are like typical Malinois, like really intense, bit cranky. Yeah. And my two would go there and just be like running around <laughs> and just be like, oh my God, what's the fun? This is so cool. <laughs> And then the two Malinois would be just be like, Ugh. <laughs> and you could just see them. They would just be like over, like over them, just yeah. like come down. <laughs> My two would just be like, but why? <laughs> yeah. That's pretty funny. It is very funny. It's like exactly how I imagine it to be. <laughs> Because your your two are staffies, aren't they? Yeah, so they're like a one's a brindle and white. Yes, <laughs> a dark brindle, like Barney, exactly yes. Barney colour. Yep. And the other one's black and white, but imagine them in those colours in tank and chopper. Yes. Literally the same. Wow. The same physique. Tank wow. And so like big, tall. Yeah. So Bruce, the black and white one, he's um he's just. He's really lanky, kind of like Barney. Yeah. Like he's really tall, big staffy chest. Yep. Like, but he's just super fun. <laughs> like he's just really athletic. Yes. Yeah. Um, and 
Toby is, yeah, probably a little bit stockier than Tank and Chopper. He's got more, more stockiness about him. Yes. But same mm, Blarabee kind of <laughs> Australian <laughs> Blarab. Yes. Um, kind of physique. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. But Toby's supposed to be a, I think I adopted him as an American Staffy cross boxer and he's not cross. Well, right. Yes. Oh, there's no, he's got, he's got a flat bull terrier face right yeah right, okay. he hasn't got the big roman nose but he's got definitely got a flat face yes yeah um so i reckon he's got bull terrier in him and then bruce uh they only know his mum because she was a pure american staffy right okay so, don't know if there's greyhound in there. <laughs> skinny mini but his brother isn't his brother's like really really short and stocky yes so, yeah not short not yeah super short but yeah his stockiness makes him look short Aww. so i don't know they sound adorable yeah <laughs> <laughs> very very cheeky <laughs> <laughs> all right matilda where is she oh yeah matilda come on she's like yes ma'am come on come on come on good girl good girl darling stay out here gussy boy <laughs> you don't need a bath Shadow. Miss Red. Super quick one. Good boy, Rover. Miss Red. Come on. Cook you. You, you. Oh. <laughs> mm, dear. Oh, my goodness, Gus. You're such a snatcher. Lose some fingers. I know. Good boy. He's like one of the packs, though. Like he's I know he is, isn't he? We think that too. He um he came. His dad is a cricketer. Okay. Um, for the Australian team. Oh wow, well, okay. And so, but the reason I'm telling you that is that he um came to us as a young dog, like a puppy. For Aww. for a long period of time whilst he was on tour. Oh, okay. So he's been, you know, like three months at a time here and there, like every time he goes on tour. Oh, yeah. So okay. he is very much, you know, a, a, a farm dog. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you've got some beautiful pearly whites, though. Must be something else I can smell. Mm, what have you been into? The bin? <laughs> Eating poo? <laughs> Just some good stuff. <laughs> they tend to like cat poo. Oh, yeah, gross. Uh, really gross. That is the most putrid thing on earth. Oh, goodness, Maxine. Cat poo? Yeah. Yeah. This thing. I would take. I don't know what it is. About. I would take any dog thing, any type of food, but cat food is just. Uh, yeah. The shepherds. Um, I'm sharing. I'm sharing something here. Over sharing, but. <laughs> uh, they were poo eaters for a very oh, long yeah. time yeah. because um, they were here with mum. You know, um, for quite a long time and yeah. obviously it's real natural you know for mums when they're feeding their puppies to eat the, the, yeah. the eat the poop up and yeah. um so it kind of became a bit of a behavioral thing where they'd go along too yeah. and eat the poop and it they had that for a while that they, they don't do it anymore but it seems to once we've got the cat they're now eating the cat poop what's oh. all that about <laughs> Toby is like, he is disgusted at the whole idea of eating Yeah! Food. And then Bruce was a good boy, and then one of my friends' dogs, who we stayed with for a while while we went home and visited my family, when he was a puppy, taught him that eating crap was a <laughs> And so now Bruce eats horse crap, kangaroo crap. Oh goodness, Maxine. Yeah. And he's not, he's not like um, discriminative. Or no. selective of what kind of so disgusting baby. Yeah. A 
I think the funniest thing though I've ever witnessed was um, pulling that stinky stuff. We were at the beach. <laughs> this guy had this, these two huge hunting dogs, like yes. Australian hunting dogs, and he's like getting, putting them back in the car, and um, he wanted them to disappear. So he's like, oh no, we heard him. We like, he's like, oh no, no, please no. <laughs> Oh. Maxine, are you talking to me? I'm sorry, I had to run off and stop them from chewing the couch. Miss Red! No more! They're proving they are their mother's daughters. <laughs> Morning. Hope. Hope. No. How's she going? Oh, really good. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> even though I'm telling her not to chew the couch, but you know, honestly, like even that, I think is. She's relaxing a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> you cheeky little girl. That's you. Yeah, it's Stephanie Capri. Is it? Oh, you can smell it. I can oh, smell I'm it. so sorry, Maxine. <laughs> Goodness me. It smells it. Tank? No. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Hey. Yes. No more. Like, no more. I only want to homeschool from now on. Oh yeah. He'll but he'll probably say the same thing. He'll be like, give <laughs> no, me the good. dogs any day. <laughs> okay, you're all not chewing anything. That's good. And how's Cruiser going? Yeah, he's going good. Yeah, he's, he's He is. Yeah. He, um, on the weekend, he kind of got, you know, a little bit of an excited bounce in his step, Aww. you know, um, to see the doggies and Luke. So it is, we're getting there. <laughs> It's um, it'll be a slow process, but that's okay. Like that should be totally ex expected. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, <clears throat> but we see we see hope that he, you know, eventually is going to enjoy, you know, his life. So Aww. that that's good. I know. He oh, look at him. He's trying to get out. Yeah, he's been doing it most of the morning. Right. <laughs> See, he used to hide in the back corner. Oh, okay. He didn't want to come out. He didn't want anything, but he he wants to come and be with the dogs. And I think it really got him going when they were howling earlier. Yeah, right. Oh, buddy, he is getting there. It's just we can't integrate unsupervised, you know, yeah. until it's a hundred percent. Yeah. We're we're not risk takers here. <laughs> 
It might it goes. might seem like it, but we're actually not. <laughs> we're uber cautious. And... But look, he um, <laughs> next to him, Diesel. He's been a good boy. He was barking before. He was, but, but look, he's kind of chilled yes. out. I can see him on the bed. Yeah, he is doing really well. He doesn't have to lose out on another home, you know, if it came forward yeah. because of that, because that's only for here. You know, not everyone. It, it, He's not a he's not a dog that you take to daycare, you know. But um, a lot of the dogs that come here are not those types of dogs, you know. And in in all honesty, I don't think a lot of dogs no. are those dogs. No, it's no, just absolutely. Um, it's one of those things, you know. Like people want their dog to be that dog. Yeah, but also because um, like being a reactive dog owner, yeah. it's not until you're actually in that situation that you yes. realise. There's more dogs that are aren't, aren't anti that are yes. antisocial yeah. or just like their own company than there are actually dogs that are social but it's only those dogs that you see. Yes. <laughs> so that's what everyone thinks a dog should be. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, dog, dog uh, parks are um, have kind of created an unrealistic um, expectation. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I definitely agree. Yeah, I went to a new client the other day and she was saying her dog is a, a guarding, um, what do you call it, a livestock guarder. Yeah, not, yeah. Not working, but yep. her breed is. Yes. And um, she, they rescued her only a year ago. Yeah, like a Maremma or? It is a Maremma. A Maremma, yeah. yeah. And um, we've got a lot around here in, yeah. a, in the valley, of the Maremmas. Yeah. yeah. And um, she's saying to me, oh, I wish she would be more interactive with other dogs. Like she, she tolerates them, but she's not that bothered. And, and she was like, asking me about it. And I was like, she's not going to want to do it because she's not, it's she's not in her nature. <laughs> yeah. She's bred to um, just, you know, be on the job and, yeah. and guard the chickens. Exactly. And, you know, she, she works with um, with another Maremma or other dogs to do her job, but it's not to be off duty, you know, and socialise. I was like, she's got you guys and that's yeah. all she feels like she needs. That's her pack. And yep. Maremmas around here, they, um, they protect the chickens, you know, from birds of prey or, mm. um, you know, sheep. But also we've got a really big uh, wild dog problem here. So, I would um, never think, because we're not really yeah. that far from... Well, we, we are in civilization. We're not out west. Mm, mm. Yes, I know. Um, but surprisingly, we do. We the the previous owner he had um, sheep on the property, yeah. and um, he would lose ten a year from wild dogs. And all the farmers they've got like trail cams set up, so we've seen footage of the pack um, that what they look like and. Oh yeah. my god. Mm -hmm. That's why I like these fences like they're to keep um like dogs in, but they were also to protect the doggies from the wild dogs, you know, initially. Yeah. They they wouldn't come in now because like, you know, the we've got a pack of twenty big dogs, like they would they would just go to the next place. But right. um I never I never ever thought that it would be around here. Yeah. yeah. Alright. And what do they look like? Do they yeah. look more like dingoes? Or? So four of them look yeah. dingo-like, yeah. but the rest of them look more, you like know, like, yeah, some kind of. Larabee. Yeah, like um, just often there's like a lot of cattle mixes. Yeah. Um, thing, ca sorry, cattle dog yeah. mixed breeds. Um, but yeah, just your average, like, mongrel bits a kind of looking dog yeah they're not they're not purebred dingoes like no. the four but they're just dingo like you know they'd have half half dingo left in charge of homeschooling.
and breakfast. <laughs> so we've ended up with pizza and Carpet Island. <laughs> Go down. So couldn't half tell that you have Italian in your background. <laughs> Pizza for breakfast. Hmm. Pizza is good every meal of the day. <laughs> ben would be in agreement uh, on that one. One hundred percent. Elle was disappointed that there were no olives to put on the pizza, so he settled for some truffle salami. <laughs> Uh, so the girls just have to be ready for uh, swimming. Uh, well, they can take the pizza in the car with them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the two brothers are probably the only two out of all of your dogs that really don't like to blow dry. Like, oh, Oscar doesn't oh no. like it, but he will follow, like, he's not, I don't know. I don't think he's actually frightened. I think I said this last time. Yeah. I don't think he's frightened of the actual blow dryer. I think he's frightened of like what might be associated with the blow dryer. Mm. Whereas these guys definitely don't like the blow dryer in itself. Mm. They're the only ones that are. He doesn't like recoil. it. Oh mm. really? Yeah. Mm. Which is not like. I find it actually surprising that they're the only two out of such a big number of dogs. Yeah. It's quite a common thing. They're generally pretty relaxed, you know, yeah. but... Um, they're such good boys in there. They are very bar. good boys. Uh, but so they... What do they do, Maxine? Like, oh, yeah, boys. okay. You'll see um, Tang mm. last time. He just completely shut down. With the, <gasps> Tanky with the boy. Blazer. Yeah. He really doesn't like it. Really don't like it. Yeah, um what's their story? These these two. These um it it simply <laughs> is uh, that uh they were dumped together um mm -hmm. at six six months, five or six months old. Um so like we could make a guess that maybe um they were a part of a litter and they didn't get sold, yeah. you know. And so they just got dumped in the bush, I think, together. And so they ended up at the pound and um, they just were coming out each week on the farm days for the pound. But Chop Chop, which is this guy, he um, put up a protest and wouldn't get back in the van. <laughs> Good for you, Chop Chop. <laughs> he just lied down and refused, didn't you, buddy? And you really um, played on my heartstrings. He's like, no, I want to stay. Yeah. So he did and then, um, but no one uh, came forward for them, you know. So they just stayed on. Didn't you too? <laughs> chop Chop walks off just saying, yep, all went to plan. <laughs> But with the Roscoe thing, because I think we talked about it last time, Maxine, and I said, yeah, he's got the same thing with the anything spray, like the hose. Um, and then I thought about it, and we don't know anything other than um, when he came to the pound, he was pepper sprayed by the police. So, and it was really traumatic, um, the the actual yeah, incident right. so maybe something to do with that i don't know that's Good all we know decisions Tank. <laughs> <laughs> it's your turn buddy come on, come on. good boy good boy <laughs> unless it was chopper last time that really didn't like the blow dryer and, and what and not Tank, you think? Um, or? I honestly can't remember who I did. Yeah, though. okay. So yeah, no, that's um, okay. Well, we'll fi we'll find out. Hey, Peter. Oh, hi. Hey, Peter. Oh, hi. Yeah, they're so they're so chilled. These two. 
but they're actually um, like when the really, really intense games out, but they're really super competitive. <laughs> and really? they're right into, yeah. I know, it's hard to imagine, isn't it? Because look, look how relaxed they look. They're always very yeah. great on the outside. Like yeah. Not yeah, it's like they're conserving energy for those moments in the day where they just really, um, they're right up there. Like they're so athletic. They're mm. they're like little champions. Yeah, that's what we say about our two. As yeah, well. right. Same physique, like yeah, they like they're Greece so would able. Just go and go and go and go and go. Yes. Like, yeah, I don't think Bruce would ever tire out. But then I say that, and then it gets to the evening. And yes. Well, if he has, they sound done exactly a lot, the same. I just think. out. Yeah. Out, and there's no way of waking Brucey up. <laughs> the, these two, um, they are really good at conserving their energy. So when absolutely nothing's happening, yeah. they are sleeping or snuggling on the couch or, you know, they're in the kitchen, you know, wanting leftovers or yeah. whatever. But if anything's happening, like motorbike, um, swimming, yeah. uh, toys thrown, they're <laughs> right, like, they never miss out. They've got FOMO. <laughs> yes. I know what that is. Yeah. But when they first came here at six months, they were real clum like real clumsy and hadn't really got their, um, you know, I don't know. That, but since then, they've matured and um, they are incredible. That's why I wish more people would be... I mean, I, it's yes. really hard, but... Because a lot of people do take on staffies or bully breeds. Yes. But I wish people would be less stereotypical about them because they're actually so chilled out. When yeah. They want to yeah, absolutely. If oh, they're the perfect, like, these two are the perfect dogs. Yeah. You know, they are with you, like, for any activity. and um, But it, as soon as you go inside, they are straight on the couch. Yeah. You don't hear boo out of them. Like, they... It's like um, they don't want to be um, kicked out or something. You know, yeah. like they, they're so quiet on the couch. The only thing is um, Tanky sneaks off into the kid's bedroom and <laughs> climbs into bed with them. Oh. I they, caught, they caught him on video. They are such nanny dogs. Oh, this boy. He just loves his babies. Don't you, mate? We had um, my partner's niece and nephew over on Saturday morning. Yes. And... Um, for dogs, like, we don't have kids, but, and that's the only kids that they've known. So for dogs that don't have kids around them, yes. 24-7. Yeah. Like, Toby loves uh, yes. the little girl. Aww. He's ten, almost 10. Yes. <laughs> and, um, Toby just loves her. Aww. And they were, we sat down on the couch, the boys went out to Bunnings, and me and the little girl, um, stayed on the couch and we put a movie on yeah and Toby has literally just like lied right <laughs> on the couch. And, and she was like oh look look and I was like oh, that's adorable <laughs> and Bruce like they genuinely yeah. Bruce loves love kids. the kids <laughs> yeah you know I think that's what we find um because there's a lot of dogs that we train to be tolerant of the children yeah exactly but there's not many that actually seek them out you know yeah. um because they love their company and tanky boy he's that dog just wants he prefers the children like he just wants to go and be with wolfie oh. you know all the little all the girls you know they're in bed with their stuffed toys reading their books <laughs> and that that's heaven to him you know <laughs> Good boy. I've got to do the same. Sorry. 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 Like, they are also tough dogs, you know. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. You can't um, deny that. Like, these boys are, can be pretty rough and tough. Um, but you also have to take in their their genuine like soft-hearted traits which you know this guy no one um no one's more soft natured than you tanky boy are they hello cutie pie hello cutie pie 
What are you saying? I haven't seen me this morning. <laughs> You've been inside with the kids. Making pizza for breakfast. No, nice. <laughs> That's the lie. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Freddie. Hello, mate. Hello, Freddie boy. How are you, buddy? How are you, buddy? And this, I say lightly, but not all body breeds hate other animals. <laughs> Yes. And I think, again, it's this That's a stereotype. stereotype. Yeah. You know, like, everyone's like, oh, my God, you've got two Southies, Billy Breeds, and you've got three cats. I'm like, yeah, so cat will beat up the dog. Absolutely. Like, one of our cats, she'll definitely take them on. Yeah. Um, oh, definitely with our... Because um, we've got these two guys, and then we've got uh, Shadow and Red and Violet. Them. But um, they all, uh, Kitty has yeah. it over all of them. Oh, yeah. yeah. And we've got um, three chickens as well, three rescue chickens. And one of my friends came over and she's like, do they not try and eat them? I'm like, nah. And one of them was out the other day. I didn't realise. And then I seen, seen Bruce. Like following it around the garden. Yeah. <laughs> and then the chickens, it's a chicken, it's not a rooster, but it was like going up like a rooster. And Bruce just thought it was the biggest game. Aww. And I was just like, you're so good. You are. Yeah. Like, you're a good boy. So well behaved. Yeah. All right. Quick drink. Tanky wants everyone to be his friends too. <laughs> Don't you, mate? Oh, it, yeah. Yeah. You can see it's like a just a gash. That's, yeah. But that's why it bleeds. It is. The, the lure in the pool is pretty intense, isn't it, mate? And you are one of those dogs that's right up there. He's a dock diver, Maxine. Yeah. Did you know that? <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Dog. You're a dock diver. His brother, Chop Chop, is now uh, an underwater diver. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see that. Not happy about it. that much of a dry Maxine honestly it's so hot he'll be he'll probably be dry in two minutes in the Sun cutie pie come on come on good girl you ready to go to work <laughs> look at her oh yeah oh yeah you're gonna help hope come on you're gonna help hope make it feel more at ease Come on, cutie pie. Look, you can have a Cheeto. Look. Cutie. Um, not you, Matilda. Just want the little one. Come on, you sure The little roly-poly one. <laughs> Stay there. Come. Sit your little bottom down there. You can see doggy now. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Well done. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. She didn't even used to take food or treats off us when she was like in a, you know, stressed situation. Yeah. So even this is a, doesn't probably seem like it, but. Well, I think it's pretty big that she's. Yeah, um, even. It in here. Yeah. Yeah, you've been so good, aren't you, darling? Treaty? Oh, no, no treat right now. <laughs> <laughs> that smells delicious. I love this one. What is that one? Um, so it's manuka honey and goat's milk. Oh. That's the actual shampoo, but this has got a watermelon smell oh, to it. That's it. Mm. It's 
smells delicious, Hope. Oh, girl. The boys have all had the it's boyfriend. It's called boyfriend smell. Boyfriend. It's because it's um, it's it technically smells of man's perfume. Does it? Yeah. How lovely. Is that that spice smell I can kind of oh, smell, no, or is that the, the perfume? That's the perfume? Is it okay? That one's called Christmas cookie. Christmas cookie. That is what it smells like. Yeah. Sorry, I think she dropped it. Sorry, Maxine. Oh, so no. Oh, sorry, I won't do any more treatos. I think she wants it and then... Yes. Like, oh, you're touching it. <laughs> That's right, I forgot for a moment. Oh, there's a wasp. Hang on. Let me just scoot it out. There we go, it's gone. You want it now? No. Of course you want it. She never says no. <laughs> she knows no hard life. <laughs> Do you? She's like, oh, I'm not getting bathed, am I? <laughs> no, <laughs> you No, you're just there as a friend. Cutie does swim, Maxine, no. and it's the cutest <laughs> thing ever. But it does give me a heart attack. Yeah. You know, sometimes like she is little and she's a pug, so she's not a. Yeah. And oh, I think she's a great swimmer, like for her build. Yeah. But um, sometimes she gets herself into some hairy situations, and <laughs> I get a bit stressed about it. Don't I? But I always have my eye on you. Don't I? It's usually me screeching though behind yeah. the camera. Save, yes. save the pug! Save the pug! <laughs> Hi, Maxine. Hi. Oh dear. I mean, I am. I'm compared to him every day because, but he was trained not to react in stressful situations. <laughs> I've had no training, Maxine. <laughs> I'm very stressed. So when I see a pug going under, that's oh, just really pushes me to the edge, isn't it? Yes. And Miss Violet, her and Miss Violet. Oh, really? Yeah, even though Miss Violet is so capable, you know, but she really puts herself in those situations that get the heart going. Well done, Heidi. At least you're not glued to the floor this time. What a good girl you are. Has she had any interest? No, well we've already adopted her. Oh, okay. She's, she, um. I didn't realize she was. Yeah, she was, like she was at her and her mom. You know, were because they came here. Goodness, it might have been April or May last year. I oh, think. Okay. Uh, and they were just really shut down, and we never really pushed them to do any. Like we just kind of used the dogs because they they loved the dogs. They yeah. trusted in the dogs, but just not humans. Yeah. Um. And then a mum died, and so we didn't really want her to just leave straight after that. She hadn't really, like, she still has her anxieties, you know, and, but back then she was still quite afraid and untrusting, and she's only just coming out of a shell now, so. Yeah. But she, this is her home. She, you know, she, she loves, in her way, she, really loves the people and the dogs and we don't really want her to go through anything else like any more change it's yeah. just a bit too much for her that's fair enough 
you're probably thinking, Maxine, does anyone ever leave the farm? <laughs> they do, they do. <laughs> well, it was that chance, yes, yes. We actually used to do um, puppies, like back when we did the daycare. Yeah. We took on like all the pounds litters, yeah. just to bring them into the daycare and give them some socialization skills. And yeah, good in being in the farm. Yeah, and they all got adopted. <laughs> Except for Miss Red and Miss Violet. <laughs> Always got to be a couple of Yeah. Champions. Well, they had some medical things going on, you know, yeah. so we just kept them on. What a good girl, cutie pie. Right, sweetie. All right, short bum. <laughs> Good. Hang on. So which one's which, Maxine? To uh, Toby's in the Eeyore one. Mm, oh, yep, in the blue. Yep, and Bruce is in the and Bruce is one. the black and white, giving yeah. him a big kiss. Cuties. Yes. My boys. <laughs> They're gorgeous. And that's... I don't know if you, you can see that. And that's Muffin, the dog at home. Oh, with so the, is that with your dad? Yeah. Yeah, gorgeous. So she's a Border Collie cross Malinois. Why? Wow, beautiful. Yeah. I, oh, goodness. Border Collie and Malinois. That's... Yeah, she was a nightmare as a puppy. Yeah. But, um, yeah, dad now, even yesterday, he was just like, she's the best dog. Oh, that, that she would be super intelligent. <laughs> oh, she's so, 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 so smart. Yeah. Like, um, and... She's, yeah, she just gets into everything and she's good at anything, you know, like yes. she's great guard dog for dad, like he lives yep. by himself quite rurally and, um, but at the same time, like she's great if people have to come in, like we had my elderly grandfather stay with us until he passed away Yeah, and um, she would let all the nurses come oh, in. Oh, wow. Yeah. She sounds amazing. Yeah. She's a very good dog. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> All right, Maxine, you have a lovely day. <laughs> Keep cool. Oh, try. Yeah, try, try. G'day, guys. So there were quite a few comments yesterday in relation to the silent walk and uh, getting you guys to note your observations for Abra. And there were a couple that were pretty spot on. And the key points that I found for Abra were the fact that she wasn't getting distracted as much. Uh, she's still a puppy and anything that is attractive, she notices. However, what I started to see was uh, not only was she not getting distracted and going so far away from the group, but she was actually disengaging from the distraction and looking back to me and uh, turning herself away so cutting whatever she was following so whether it be diesel or cruiser or one of the other dogs or whoever it was uh, she would look back and then disengage from that and then follow me when i change direction so uh, a really good sign from abra uh, the initial the initial um point i wanted to point out and see if anyone got was the fact that yes she was staying closer and yes she was um uh, you know, looking back to me, but I was expecting or, or anticipating a few people to say that it could be related to the fact that. Where's the rover? We got all our cattle over the road that are making a fair bit of noise, so I'm just trying to figure out where it's coming from. But, um, you know, I was expecting or anticipating a few people to say that, uh, yes, she was staying closer, but it was because Diesel and Cruiser weren't drifting up as far. And initially, it would have been a correct assessment. However, the fact that we were seeing her 
even still following other dogs, but turning back and having a look, uh, was a really positive sign that she's making that improvement herself and not just because of the other dogs. The other thing that I thought was a very uh, key point to note was right at the end when we were going home, uh, all the dogs were out eating in front and obviously the really in tune dogs like Chopper, Lily, uh, Maggie, all those guys, Joey, they, they came straight with me, but uh, Abra was in the front pack that drifted right off towards that corner and she was the first dog to turn around in that um in that group so that was a really positive sign again it just proves just how intelligent she is this is her second walk she's already picking up the rules of the game uh she's understanding she's tuning in really positive uh outcome for abra so well done guys there are quite a few comments um majority of them are right it was all round positive uh, improvement from the last walk Yes. Did I just see you munging down on a pizza slice there? <laughs> Looks like you married an Italian. Um. I've just come down from um, the last dog being washed with Maxine. Yep. And. Turned um, it into a war zone. <laughs> well, the war zone, here comes the wind. The war zone started before this. And it was um, when we were washing the dogs, it was crazy. I heard some. I was just. I was like, no, 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 no. I was inside with Elle doing her homework, doing her school, and I just heard screaming no, and I was like, is that on an iPad or is that on the TV? And I told everyone to be quiet, I'm listening, and as soon as I told everyone to be quiet, it stopped. And so I couldn't figure out what was going on, but yeah, when I saw you come to the door and say, you need to get out here, I was like, oh, okay, something's going on. So what happened? Oh, it just, they were just misbehaving. It, it oh. wasn't, like, there wasn't actually any, were you talking about me screaming? The dogs weren't squealing or anything, unless well, I you, just heard someone screaming no. It was me. And the dogs barking. Yeah, so me going, no, you know, no, no, no. Yeah. Miss but me. I, but I didn't know it was you. I thought it was Maxine. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, they were terribly behaved this morning, and even Maxine said, goodness me, this is crazy. So I had to come in and get you, because you were... You're in with the kids because I was filming yeah. the dogs getting their bath because Maxine was here um, seven o'clock this morning. Um, I'll wait till you throw it. I'm just waiting for anyone to step out of line. Ready, go!
Oh, yeah, as soon as I came out. Oh. It's like we've gone backwards 12 months. Yeah. They're all picking on each other. They're all acting up. That's what happens when I'm not out here. There's, they've had rest yesterday. Mm. And so today they're full of energy. But that is no excuse for the behaviour that I was seeing. Like they were all well out of line. Well, what's the reason for it? So I'll tell you what happened. Obviously, I'm not out here first thing in the morning to establish ground rules. Yeah. For the, the very first introduction of AMRO arriving. Um, there was a miscommunication with AMRO opening gates and the dogs just allowed to freely run through the gates however they like, mm. which set the standard for we're free, let's do whatever we want. And then they get that sense of, oh, yeah, if we're free, what else can I get away with? <laughs> which is why we control the gates. Yeah. You know, that's the main reason why we sit there and go, Yep, one at a time, and then anyone misbehaving or over the top or uh, doing anything, we're on it because it's a it's a bottleneck. They've got to go through me one at a time. So there's that. There's a power vacuum. I'm not there. There's a whole heap of control points that have just been opened up with the floodgates. And so then when I came down and I threw the first ball, there was like three different fights that broke out. I was like, what? What is going on? So it's just been a massive boot camp for the last half an hour, just repeatedly throwing balls. Anyone who even looks like being any social, I'm on them. No, no, no. You should have seen Shadow. She's like real excited, goes running around. Someone else gets a no. She sits there perfectly in the paddock. She was the worst behaved this morning. Well, there you go. So this is what I'm talking about. Yep, it was you. So, and I saw her. Even she, Maxine, she was she like, got a correction this oh my morning goodness. Too. But this is what I'm saying. So Shadow. this is this is perfect example of the type of dog Shadow is. Where do you remember the soup bowl? Mm. She was one up on the table licking all the soup, and then when I came in, just sitting there like soup all over her face. Yeah. You know. So she's that dog that will do it sneakily, and that's why Joey has a real thing with her because she'll lick, lick, lick her face, bite, lick, 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 bite. So she's not being completely nice. Which is well, not, not being completely honest. <laughs> well, nice or honest. Oh, but, shut but this is one of the reasons. This was one of the main. She try. She factors. does try to be good. Hold on. Aww. Stop sticking up for her. This is one of the main contributing factors as to why we adopted her. Yeah. Because you should be too much dog for our people. Yes. Because she will play that innocent, look at me, I'm so, it wasn't me, how could it be me, look at my face. When yeah. really, she's like, look at me, no, not me, turn your back, <laughs> give it <away. laughs> Oh, no, not me, Ugh. You know, that's her. Yes. We know that it's her. Oh, but we love her anyway, everybody. Don't anyway, worry. So, of course we love all the dogs. <laughs> but I'm not going to allow any dogs to pick on other dogs. So, Abro yes. had a really... Abra. Sorry, sorry, Abra. I've done this so many times. I've called you Abra, I've called her Amro, and now I just went Abro. I mixed the two of them together. Uh, my apologies. Um, Abra got a really steep learning curve this morning where I was like, that's it, no more. And uh, so she all of a sudden went from puppy play to now, no, you're not a puppy anymore. This is, you're already... Got, she's too much dog for the other dogs to naturally find their bedding order. So I've had to step in and, and I'm really focusing on uh, her, Barney and Roscoe. Because Roscoe has been, obviously, with this amount of activity in the pack, Roscoe is just on overload going, I'm overworked, I'm underpaid, I've got too much on my plate, and he's just losing it. And so he's just starting to go for dogs left, right and centre. to try to And so there's all sorts of spot fires I've been putting out this morning. But I've purposely just been like, okay, I'm put, drawing a line in the sand. And the first however many dogs that stepped out of line, it set the example for all the rest of them. And so now they know this game here, yes, it's a game, but it's really just a test. This whole thing here, I'm just searching for who's misbehaving. And uh, the next one on my list is Miss Violet. So I've been watching her, she, you know, she does those runs and she barks around. I've seen her twice now, do one at Joey and one at Barney, where she runs up and barks and just open teeth barks on their face and then keeps running. And so I'm like, okay, let's play those games, we'll focus on you next. So I just want to get everyone else sorted and then it will be Miss Violet's turn. She's a little bit more difficult because... And we haven't yeah. even add, added Cruiser or Diesel to the mix no, yet. they're not even out. <laughs> 
because with this kind of craziness, it's just going to set a really bad example for those other two which we're trying to curb. Um, it's one of those things where we've been focusing on cruiser and diesel for quite a while and letting go of all the rest. And so that's more so what I think is Not letting on. go, letting go. Like you say that and people are going to think, oh, what, you haven't been doing any training. And that's no, not, a, not of true. Of I've been doing training, but I've been focused on yes. a dingo and a dog that wants to herd and you know bite other dogs when they're distracted. You know? So that's what I've been focusing on. But everything else that's happening over this side, I'm seeing it, but today I'm putting my foot down and going, no more. I've watched you for the last couple of weeks and it's getting out of hand. So the thing is, as soon as you let it slide at all, you, it escalates and it gets worse and worse. Just like this morning with the gates and it's kind of been like, you know, they've been getting away with a little bit, a little bit each time, just little bits here and there. And so the feeling of, um, you know, lawlessness maybe is starting to creep in. And then I've been watching it going, right, I'm gonna, have a, I'm gonna have to put my foot down soon. And then this morning was the final straw. So it's up completely out of water. So. At the moment, I'm sitting here going, come on guys, you ready? But in my mind, I'm like, who dares? Who wants to bring it on? Anyone? Anyone want a piece of this? Just watch the Miss Bowler the way she comes in. She does this fast, but she's doing it and making contact with her face. I'm going to pretend you can't see me phase. She went through, I'm going to hide behind the cameraman phase. Just everything. And I'm like, that's it. We're playing Big Kid rules now. She's she's uh, having an impact like Big Kid to the pack. So she's a league above as far as intensity goes for, compared to the rest of the dogs. So time she matures. So there's a gap, corrected here, praised here. Then as it continues, she'll start to lower that gap and eventually pinpoint exactly where she's going wrong. And that's where the timing of the no happens. Unfortunately, with this many dogs and the big ruckus at the same time as it's all going on, it's very difficult for her to actually hear me say no because there's so many other dogs barking and carrying right around her at the time. So, you just have to go through that consistency and over time with your consistency she's going to pinpoint where am I going wrong. Yes I can get involved in the game but I can't make contact. And they, just for everyone at home, because some people I know will probably think, can, do they really, can they really understand where the, you know, what, what they're doing wrong. And I'm just going to give them 100%. some, yeah. 
Um, don't be fooled. Yeah. You know, don't don't that, think, don't underestimate a dog. So, so that's, for instance, that's where they take advantage of you. That's exactly right. So, for instance, I'm watching and um, right, Barney, yeah. who knows exactly the pinpoint now. Yeah. He ha there is no gap. He's no. closed that a thousand percent. But what he's doing now? When he when he mouths, if you don't see it. He turns around and, and looks because look, know. he knows, he knows he exactly wrong. what the wrong thing he did and is, where it was. This is what I was going to say about him is he will no longer do it open anymore. He only does it with his back turned and when they're shoulder to shoulder and then he'll quickly go down for a bite and turn around and go, did you see that? Because yeah. he's calculating when can I get away with it and when can't I? Mm. And so he's calculated any of these other moments which are obvious, he gets pulled up straight away. But the only reason why I'm knowing that he's doing that now no. The only reason why I know that he's doing that now is because the other dogs are attacking him. And so I'm like, why are they picking on Barney? Then you watch Barney and he's biting him on the legs and they turn around and have a go back. So they're retaliating because he's just repeatedly getting away with biting him on the legs. So that's what he's doing to Roscoe. That's what he's doing to Freddo. Uh, I, saw, I saw him do it to Tank. Uh, he even did it to Lily and Joey because uh, initially to look at him and most people would look at it and go, Barney's being perfect. You know, he's sitting there perfectly, not doing anything, but he understands, I can't do it here, can't do it here, can't do it here, but he still has this uh, thought of, oh, I can do it in these moments. Um, so that's why today I was just laying a smack down on everyone. I'm like, righto, anyone stepping out of line, we're going through the training. Um, anyone involved in any, um, you know, kerfuffle, uh, they're both coming over and and doing some boot camp you know it's one of those things where they just realize oh, we're going back we're going back to basics you know what i mean but this is this is ongoing like this isn't something that's new this is normal for these kind of dogs this will happen continuously throughout their life with dogs where you've got issues like they had this is a constant maintenance exercise for them this, in, with this kind of uh, behaviour and the dogs that they were before they came here, they will always need this reminder. They'll yeah. always slip back if you allow. So that's why it's important so, to maintain the training. And maintain the training. But just a reminder for everyone. Quiet. You know. Nope. Quiet. Cause nope. You can't hear me. Nope. So I just need you to explain, because everyone's going to be thinking, um, oh, but Barney didn't come here for rehabilitation. So. Yeah, no, Barney didn't come here for rehabilitation, but Barney came here with zero social skills. Yeah. And so Barney was actually very antisocial as far as his involvement in play. Barney was in the same category as Abra. Abra's not coming here for rehabilitation, but Abra is well out of line as far as her idea of play. Uh, so Barney still had to learn these behaviours and learn the rules, but the problem is Barney has come into a world of rehabilitation where there are all these dogs that are so easily led back down that path with dogs like Barney, for example, who are going to antagonise mm. and provoke. So, and just for everyone at home, Barney had it the day that he arrived. It's not oh like, yeah. just, just uh, I don't know, people might think, oh, you know, maybe it's developed from, no, but this you know, is, this, this kind is, of play. But not... there, I posted a video when he first arrived and, yeah. and he literally bit every dog that ran past That's him right. when we were playing Frisbee in the backyard. But so, let's not, um, and we, and let's we not said, things. no. All boxes uh, are like this. That I was about to, the, my next line was about to say, at the time, we said, this is completely yeah. expected. He's a completely unsocialized boxer right. puppy. So she's following the exact same line. Yeah. This yeah. is Hope. She's yep. only just coming out into her um, confidence. So she's starting to exhibit those behaviors. Maggie did it, uh, you know, but Maggie didn't do it to the extent Barney does. Mm. And definitely not to the extent that Hope does either. But they all do it that's mm. how they play yeah you know that's that's just part of no no we don't allow those rules here because yes. it's going to end up in that's right you know lord of the flies yes <laughs> and only three dogs are going to come out alive <laughs> what are your bets on who's the three cutie pie <laughs> yes definitely <laughs> she's going to oversee the whole thing yeah Bow, two points <laughs>
Yeah. Well, I think um, just uh, for everyone at home again, we are just sharing what it's like to manage a large pack of unsocialized, you know, dogs that never got. Yeah. Antisocial, uh, aggressive, you know, all of the above and bring them into this area. So now that even come, even dogs that have come from um, like bloodlines that are aggressive. Ready? Go! Good girl, Abra. Good girl. Well done. Good girl. Well done, darling. Good girl. Good girl. So every now and again, you need this. This is something that you know they keep needing reminding of because you give them more freedom and they keep testing the boundaries and it's just a simple case of um, you know uh, I think I spoke about it recently where you'll start off that every second week you'll do a boot camp and then it will go to every month and then it will go to two months three months you know the, the space between where you have to go hold on a second I'm sick of this baby yeah, let's fix it and all you do is spend half an hour doing it takes two minutes and then they go yeah okay remember and they do it again for six so, be so this is just all part of maintaining that relationship because there'll be moments where you know you're too tired or this happens or this happens and, you know all it takes is one out of routine um, activity and they will go this is not the routine what else are you doing yeah. okay so this morning the out of routine bye girls Um, so the out of routine thing this morning was Maxine turned up early, I wasn't out here first thing because I was doing homeschooling with the girls, we were filming, dogs pretty much were doing whatever they want behind us and they just went, nobody's watching guys, let's go nuts. And they did. And so then they came out here and went, righto, we're going to pay for that. So now we should be able to go get Diesel and Cruiser everyone will be okay. Just seen how excited he got yesterday to see everyone. Aww. He's jumping up and saying hello. It's awesome. He was doing what um, the shepherds usually do. Yeah. Like, you know, giddy, Just over giddy. the top playful, yeah. Wow, that's so cool. Just saying, real excitement to see everyone. Yeah. <laughs>
uh, mate, you had a bath this morning and everything. Beautiful. Put on our clothes. Put on our feet. I checked my feet. Not me. Oh, yes, yeah, you. Oh, Emma. <laughs> no wonder you could smell it. Mr. Crusty boy. Oh, Mr. Oh, Mr. Hello. 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 I see you. I see you. Oh, boy, mate. Oh, boy. Good boy, mate. Yeah, that's just Roscoe. He read it well, though, didn't he? He did. See, if Barney did that, there'd be no problem. But he refuses. <laughs> so. you, Roscoe. No, he did just exactly what... He did exactly what he needed. Now, there'll never be an issue. What a good boy you are. Yeah, good boy. Good what boy. a good boy you are, good Cruiser. Boy, yeah. <laughs> He says, I've been canine yeah. way longer than this lot. Exactly. <laughs> 4,000 years, actually. <laughs> Rosie and Matilda. Yeah. No wonder he loves them so much. Yeah. And now see, this is where the difference is. Like Roscoe hasn't changed his yeah. tone, mm. but his body language changes. Mm. So all of a sudden he goes, oh yeah, okay, you're expecting that. But then Roscoe starts to play. Yeah. See this in the wild. Oh, yeah. This is very, this is normal. very normal canine behaviour. But this is the thing: you either do this, or you fight out for supremacy. Mm. And so the only reason why it's still an ongoing thing for Barney and Roscoe and Barney and Fredo is because I don't let them fight us out. Mm. So I step in and call it. But naturally, there's going to be a pecking order. You know, and if you don't respect the size and strength of your opponent, then you're going to. <laughs> Roscoe's like, I like this guy. Yeah. He understands me. Yeah. Good boy, Cruiser. Good boy. Good boy, man. Yeah, good boy. Good boy. Oh, yeah, you too, mate. Hey, you got a new friend. You got a new friend. So, um, we... Um, the people at home would see this kind of behaviour a lot in our pack. Mm. Um, the licking in the mouth. Yeah. Uh, the, the shepherds do it a lot, like um, especially Rosie and Matilda. Yeah. 
and too much though. <laughs> they don't know. They don't. Unfortunately, they've not learnt the hard way of um, when it's too much. Hmm. You know, but like it is a sign of respect. It is, but then it becomes a nuisance. But usually, the, the bigger dog will tell the dog that's enough. Yeah, and it's enough to you know. But obviously, yeah, Roscoe's not allowed to get to that point of that's enough. Yeah. So it does mean that dogs like Rosie and Matilda do it a bit too much. Yeah, but it is a sign of respect, uh, acknowledging their rank, their higher rank than them. Um, you know, bonding or yeah. part of the pack. So it is a, it's actually a really cool thing to see Cruiser doing it. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't expecting that so early. Yeah. It's good, but that's what I, I saw yesterday, how excited he got to see all the dogs and see us come through. I thought, oh, wow, this is, um, this is good. And then straight away, he just started doing this to everyone. I was like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah. Mm. So it's good that he's following it up today. Yeah. See, now this is the difference between oh, what Roscoe is doing now with Cruiser compared to what he does with Barney. Mm. We'd never show that submission with Barney because Barney's never acknowledged him as mm. um, higher up, you know? Mm -hmm. No more, Fredo. We're just hanging out, it's too hot, buddy. Hi, everybody. Hello, Yvonne. Oh, well, I was just going to explain that oh. um, we got this lovely email. I jumped the gun. <laughs> it's about you, Yvonne. Uh, we got this lovely email um, where Yvonne's daughter um, has let us know that it was her mum's 80th. And yeah. um, Yvonne is a fan of watching the videos of the doggies at the farm. And she asked that in lieu of presents for her 80th um, it's a big birthday, number. that um, her friends and family donate money to the farm. How nice is that? Oh, so Such nice. a beautiful gesture. <laughs> so lovely. And um, Yvonne's daughter let us know that at her 80th birthday party, that they put up the three years worth of calendars on the wall oh, cool. and they had iPads playing the videos, you know, so of that, the farm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So sounds like my kind of party. Yeah. <laughs> so it's such a generous, thoughtful, kind, everything yeah. thing to do. Thank you so much, Yvonne. And also to your friends and family that, um, you know, made those contributions. Yeah. Um, it's just such it's a lovely. Beautiful. It is. It's really lovely. Yeah, so we so, thought we'd do a special shout out for you thank in you recognition. And so happy thank you very much. Happy birthday as well. Happy birthday. Hope it was great. Hope yep. there was no hangover. <laughs> but uh, really appreciate it. And we thought it was worth a shout out. Yeah. And all the doggies, thank you. Yeah, thanks very much. Hope you have a really good day. Yeah. It's very hot. I feel like it's at that temperature where your muscles are just like, just give up. Take a load off. We'll go jump in the pool. Yeah, it's really warm. What's the temperature today? Like 38 or something? Mm. Yep. 38 degrees. What's that Celsius. in Celsius. Celsius. And it's autumn here, just for everybody. Yeah, it's not even summer. It's not summer anymore. We're uh, like a week into autumn. How do we change this? <laughs> 98 degrees Fahrenheit. You're not going to hear 
hear everyone leave. <laughs> She's fallen asleep at not a good time. She's gonna get left behind. This is why we used to get a heart attack. Yeah. Come here and just think, she's, she's died. Yeah. She's had a heart attack and she's died. But yeah, because she, she just can't hear. She just collapsed in the grass. I'll, I'll let her know. Hope, Abra, Miss Violet, Banjo, Miss Red, Maggie, Cruiser, Barney, Shadow, Gus, Cruiser, Cruiser. Good job, mate. Well done. Sam, come on, Sam. <laughs> oh, sorry, Miss Violet. Um, we usually leash Cruiser to bring him from one area to the next just to um, so that we can guarantee that he comes he through when he gets there but this time we have allowed him to kind of come along at his own free will and um, can see him he's just there in the background he does want to join us um, yeah but he gets a bit funny now oh, that um gee the branches are he gets a bit funny when he's left alone as last dog you know he yeah. he doesn't like it he, he was happy to come through as a group but now that he's found himself separated he doesn't have the confidence to want to come through so he's just yeah. hanging there, right, like in the bushland, just just on the other side. I've called him. I've left the, the gates are open, although that one's just blown closed. I'll have to open it again. So hopefully he comes and joins us. Yeah, I'll just open this gate again for him. And tie it. Yeah, okay.
those two toys until he got that sunk straight away. Okay. I love our little howl. Yeah, it's cute, isn't it? <laughs> I haven't quite figured out what it is yet. On this hot day. Good boy, Mr. Gus. Good boy, Mr. Gussy boy. Good boy. Good. Gussy boy, you didn't get out, mate. What happened? What happened, buddy? You gotta get out on the ramp. He's like thinks it's a swim up bar. I got it here. I got it here. <laughs> She's like, don't be silly, I was never interested in the toy. Yeah. <laughs> Maggie really wants to get in, look at her. Yeah, she loves it now. She's not coming in that to do it herself, but she won't fight in Georgia. Yeah. Thank you, boy. Oh. Good 
Show this Abra how you do the back trick. Okay. There we go. That's how you do it, Abra. She's like, I've been doing this since before you were born. Whip a snapper. <laughs> Good girl, darling. Hey, Chris. Oh, lunch. Yeah, nice. Please. Thank you. Oh, yeah, what is it? Oh, yes, please. A koala bear with claws. Yeah. <laughs> Just training her to go to war. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. And you know she would. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she would. Oh, oh yeah, I can smell that from here. It smells amazing. It smells delicious. Oh, Freddo, I found one of your favorites, mate. Where are you, Freddo? Hey, oh, there he is on the deck. Ready, buddy? Ready, buddy? Turn around. Go! Oh, it's underwater. 
water. Maybe trouble after that. They need a chop. Today, guys, so we are on Ooh. Lily, leave it. Lily, come on. Good girl. We are on Operation Recover Diesel. He went and walked about, found himself on the outside of the gate by himself. There he is, doesn't take long. Send the dog through, there he is. Hey, buddy. Just been hiding under a tree. What you been doing? we we'll go stand over in the shade somewhere. It is hot in the sun. Missed out on the pool session, these, um, cruiser. Might just cook that up and say diesel instead of cruiser. Operation Recover Cruiser. Yeah, well, doesn't take long. You just throw the dogs through. They all run up the hill, make a bit of noise. He comes out from wherever he's hiding. He's very well camouflaged, I must say. And he doesn't move through the bush like a normal dog, where they'll just constantly move, and the first thing that your eyes spot is movement. So it's very easy to see. He stands very still and just watches you. So it makes it that much more difficult. Gus, Gus, stay here, good boy. It makes it that much more difficult to actually spot him. Hey, mate. Good job, buddy. So usually Cruiser would just happily come along from the playground to the pool, and I have done it a couple of times with him, but on this particular occasion, Dylan was walking between the pool and the garage, replacing the water bottles and filling up with new water bottles. And that was enough for Cruiser to say, oop, change in normality here. Not sure about this guy. I'm going to leg it around the back. And once he'd gone into that mode, he struggled to come around and make the effort to go through the gates. So he'll follow through with the dogs, but once the dogs have already gone through and he's not there, he finds that a little bit challenging. 
uh, here we go. The ranger's coming back through, and so he's going to take off. Good boy, mate. You're right. So Dylan's coming through with the ranger. So he's going to find himself a nice spot to create some distance and maybe hide. There you go, behind the log pile. Nice little gully there. And so he'll just sit there and hide and wait for Dylan to come through. So this is the kind of behaviour that I'm talking about. He's been here for a little while. Oh, it's coming. He hasn't really noticed it just yet. Hopefully he finds some comfort in me. But the range is about to drive up. Good boy, mate. Good boy, the ranger's still here, You're not out of the woods yet. Stay here, buddy. Don't go down that way. Yeah, there it is, you see it. Good boy, mate. Good boy. Good boy. Well done. It's all right, mate. It's all right. Good job, buddy. Stay here. You don't have to run. You don't have to run, mate. Yep, there he goes. Good job, mate. Oh, well, that's good. With my presence here, he hasn't taken off like he usually does. He'll usually take off up the top of the hill and disappear over the top. So that was good. Because the ranger's come back. So there you go, exhibit A. The ranger, he's seen it every day for however long he's been here now, and he's still showing a lack of trust for it. Even though in here at the farm, he's never had a bad experience. Anything I can think of. He's never seen the mower before. Maybe he's had another reaction to the mower, or maybe it's just the ranger. Good boy, mate. Hello cutie pie. Ooh. Hello pie. Hello Gus. Oh you two boys. You're so beautiful. Oh you. Hey Cruiser. Good job mate. Hey. Good boy buddy. Good boy mate. Hey. Good boy. That's a mower, you're not too scared of the mower. Just the ranger. Yeah, good job. Well, the only thing that that makes me think is maybe it's not so much a new experience that it is. Hey, buddy. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah, well done. Good boy, man. Yeah, good job. Maybe he has got a negative experience associated with that. So when he was taken from the wild, he was chained up with uh, quite a few hunting dogs in the property near where he was taken from. And so they might have had buggies like this and used them in their hunting. And so he's got a negative association towards it, which would make a little bit more sense because the first time he saw it, he took off. First time he saw the range out, he, he really ran, he ran the fence line. So he's getting better. Mm. He didn't react the same way to the mower. And he doesn't seem to have the same reaction to the motorbikes. It's just that ranger. Hey mate. Good job, buddy. Buddy, good boy, mate. 
Good boy. Well done, mate, eh? Well done. Good job, buddy, huh? You don't want to go down and rest with the puppies? Oh, what a good boy. Hello, mate. Hello, mate. Hello, mate. How are you, buddy? How are you, buddy? Boy? Good job, brother. Good job, man. <laughs> oh, who's this? Who's this? Gussie boy. Hello, Mr. Gus. Oh. Hello, Mr. Gus. We're all a bit close now. We're all getting in there. Your growls are received as fun for Abra. It's like, oh, it's playtime. It's playtime. Isn't it? better than the majority of our pack good kitty usually they just want to eat her yeah no usually they have eyes like he's not he's not really fast is he well she's she's trying to hunt him good boy good boy Yeah, I just let the dogs through the back gate and he disappeared. Aww, I thought he would. Just been hanging out there. It's just been waiting. That's one of the character traits, yeah. So if his head it... can fit through a hole, his body can. Oh, right. Hello, mate. Good boy. Hello. Hello. This? You in a walk? Good boy, mate.
Is she ready for it? Looks like she's gonna. You see this? It's very small, it's tail. Oh no. I think she's a bit smarter than you. Thank you.